What I, I've been thinking about something for a long time, and I'd love to know what you guys think. I've always wondered if there will be an NBA player again to average 40 points per game for an entire season. And I mean like playing games too. Like don't like don't like you can't average 40 and then you only play, you know, 60 games. Like you got to play at least like 70 to 75 games, right? So to average 40 points per game for 70 games that's a lot of points it's a lot of points and like you know most of us know like you're not that doesn't mean that you're scoring exactly 40 every single game right that means you're scoring probably high 20s to high 30s each night and then you have like a couple crazy games where you drop 60 or 70 um so the players in the league now that I think would have any chance to do it are the ones that are, you know, dropping those big point games. So Luka Doncic, he just dropped 73 against the Hawks this year. Uh, Joel Embiid dropped 70. You know, we've had Damian Lillard and Donovan Mitchell both put up 70 plus. But it's, it's not easy to sustain high scoring games like that. Um, I do think Luca probably has the best chance to do it out of anybody. And if I had to pick a second choice, it probably wouldn't be Embiid. It would probably be Victor Wembanyama. But I still think he's a ways away from that. But I think Wemby is just unstoppable. So if he wanted to score 50 a game, he, he probably could figure out a way to do it. If he bulks up too, like, oh, it's over. It's over. It's f-ing over. Um, but I think Luca has a chance. I think Luca has a real chance. And I don't know if he'll actually be able to do it. You know, he's getting older, so I think they're going to start to play him less minutes. Um, not next season or even the season after that, but I think as, a, as we move forward, he's, he's not going to play as many minutes because I think he's even said it. Like, people have asked him if he's going to break LeBron's scoring record. And he said back, he's like, I'm not, I'm probably not going to play that long. Like, I'm not going to play as long as LeBron has. Like, you know, Luca's, I don't even think 26, and he's already, like, you know, getting riddled with injuries. Like, he's hobbling all over the place. You know, maybe he just has to take a little bit better care of his body, and then that'll solve it. But I personally hope Luka Doncic is in the league for as long as possible because he is one of the most entertaining players I've ever seen in my life. But I think, I think he could put up 40 PPG in a season. I, r- I really think he could. Um, I don't think it happens while Kyrie's on the team. I think the only instance where he does that is like he literally is the only scoring option. <laughs> and he's just going to be forced to take as many shots as possible. And when he takes shots, he makes most of them. He's just he's just a shot maker. So I think Luke has a great chance. I think Wemby has a great chance as well because especially if he bulks up, no one's pushing this guy around. He's extremely quick. He can handle the ball. And he's a smart basketball player. So he knows how to score and score in a hurry. And to average 20 points per game as a rookie and, you know, not to mention that he's going to get a ton of rebounds, especially offensive rebounds. So he's just going to have so many more opportunities than you know some of these other high-scoring players have because of all the things that he can do on the court. He just has very few weaknesses. And I think those gaps in his game are going to continue to shrink where you're, you're really not going to have any gaps in his game. But it would be interesting. I know everybody was getting all mad that you know, this is an atrocity that, you know, these guys are scoring all these points. Like, why can't we just enjoy it? Why can't we just enjoy that people are scoring points? Like, this is what makes headlines. This is what gets people involved in the game. This is how players get their names out there. You know, like, like it's not going to be fun if people are dropping a max, like, 20 points, like, 
every day. Like, yeah, it's cool to average 20, but it's also cool to see a guy drop 73. You know, I don't know why people are upset about it. And, you know, people were saying, oh, let's bring back hand checking. Like, to be completely honest, like, I don't think that's going to do anything. Guys are already, like, pushing dudes and it's not getting called for fouls. Like, the reason Joel Embiid gets so many fouls is because you literally, like, he's he's not going to move. You know, like, I think a lot of people don't understand, like, how big of a man he is. Like, he's, like, seven feet or seven one and, like, nearly 300 pounds so how how do you not foul him if you're you know smaller like he's just he's just gonna dunk on you so you might as well try and foul him right or he's gonna hit the mid-range but he just has so many you know things in his repertoire of skills that it's you're gonna foul him like go look at go look at Shaq right and Wilt Chamberlain like they were getting fouled all the time because that was what you had to do. So I don't really like the argument of like, oh, it's not fun to watch because he's constantly getting fouled. It, it's the game. It's the game of basketball, right? Like if he wasn't getting called for the fouls, like do you think Philly fans would be happy about that? No. <laughs> Philly fans would be rioting in the f- streets if Joel Embiid was not getting foul calls because he is getting fouled. And it's just bigger players like that get fouled a lot more because you, you, like you can't, you're not going to block his shot. You're not going to stop him from posting you up. So what are you going to do? You're going to foul him. You know, Luca, it's a little different because he's, he's dribbling around the court. He's, 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 he can foul bait a little bit too, but he's not, he's not, he's not doing it to the same extent that Joel Embiid is right. But it's part of the game. Jalen Brunson is trying to get fouls too, you know, you got to think about it. like these guys are, you know, getting paid all the money that they are for a reason. You know, they're top tier basketball players and you can only do so much with the game on a physical level. You have to think about it and have it in your mind that thinking the game is almost almost more important than the physical aspect. Like if you don't have confidence in your game, if you don't understand the the sets that you're running, if you don't understand, you know, defensive sets that you're running, like you're not going to be you're not going to be that effective. Like I can guarantee you that Luka Doncic and Joel Embiid and Jalen Brunson and Giannis and LeBron James, like all these guys are super successful because they're, you know, great athletes, they're great at basketball, but it's because that they understand the game so well and they're out there playing chess, not checkers. So think about that. And next time people want to start complaining about guys dropping a lot of points or shooting too many free throws, like, chill out. Just chill out. Enjoy the game. Grab some popcorn. Watch the, just watch the game and have fun. So I love seeing guys score a ton of points. It's, it's extremely entertaining. It's probably not entertaining for the guys that are guarding him, but, you know, the NBA is a big reality show. It's a big reality show. You got people playing games all the time, and then the stuff that happens behind the scenes and in the media is just as interesting, right? It's all about the stories around the NBA and you know stuff like that. Someone scoring 40 points per game in a season would be an incredible story, and that would be cemented in history. And it would be cemented in history different than like the Wilt Chamberlain era where he averaged like 45 and then he averaged 50 because it was just a different era. And Wilt Chamberlain, frankly, is a different player than any of these players we see in the league now. I, I would argue that the players in the league now are all, you know, much more skilled than Wilt Chamberlain. And that's not a knock on Wilt Chamberlain. It's just Wilt Chamberlain was extremely dominant. He was just a very dominant player, and you couldn't stop him. But he didn't have as much versatility as some of these other guys. So, you know, even if someone doesn't average 40, I, you know, I could see someone getting close to, you know, breaking Kobe's record of 81 at some point. Um, but, you know, there's a whole different thing with that. I think people don't want to touch it because they want to keep Kobe in the history books. But, hey, even if you pass it, like, Kobe's still going to be there. It's like Kobe still scored 81. That's not going anywhere. So I think it would be awesome. 
I'm I'm hoping like Luka Doncic hears this and he's like, yeah, I'm gonna go out and get 40 every night. That would be sick, Luka. You should do that. You should totally do that. Um, but yeah, we'll we'll see. You know, it's gonna be it's gonna be a great year in the NBA. I've been saying this a lot, but I I have a great feeling about this upcoming season. It's gonna be a great year in the NBA. It's gonna be super entertaining. So grab your popcorn, strap your seatbelt on. Get ready for the ride.